Hello, friends, and welcome back to Dentistry Unmasked. My name is David Rice, and with myself, as always. Hey, Pam Maragliano Muniz. I am so thrilled for this week's episode. So, oh my gosh, I don't know. So, every practice owner has to struggle with this. So, I know I do. You know, even though we have a website and they said websites are kind of antiquated and you don't really need to have a website. It's really more about Google reviews and all these things out there. Like we still pay for SEO and we still like can't let it go because what happens if we let it go? Like, are we going to die and nobody's going to find us? And I don't know. So with us to kind of help really like cut through all the crap and give us the skinny on what's really important for us with marketing is Abe Casbo. Abe, welcome. Thank you, Pam. Dave, I'm so excited to be here and I can't wait to kind of delve into my my favorite subject, which is marketing. So let's just start with it. Why are we so afraid to drop SEO and, and should we drop SEO or should we like maybe do a little SEO? Like what's like the right balance for a practice who is still always and we should always be looking to grow and attract new patients? Well, it, you know, um, I, I want to back that up a little bit and talk about SEO within sort of the grand scheme of things, right? So SEO is is one portion of digital marketing. It is not the entire thing. And it, it, it its relevancy over the last, certainly over the last 10 years since mobile has really taken over, um, has, has really like it, it fell off the table. And we work in a lot of industries outside of dental, which have recognized this. For some reason, dental practices, including DSOs uh, of all sizes, really, are still stuck on it, as you said. And I think it's it's sort of like fear of sort of losing that place. But here's the thing about that, that every dental practice needs to know. It um, internet, organic internet traffic, 65% uh, of it is fake. And if you know how to read your Google Analytics, you're, you're gonna find that out very quickly. What marketing companies tend to do, especially digital marketing companies, they tend to produce these sort of dashboards. And by the way, like dentistry is so full of dashboards, I can't even believe it, right? But on the marketing side, um, you know, they, they, they could sort of show you like, oh, he, you know, he, here's the traffic. And, but the question is who is coming to the website? Is it bots? Again, you know, 65% of internet traffic is fake, meaning that it's bot generated and it's bot generated from the United States, not China or Russia. This isn't me speaking, Google what I'm saying. So, so if we look at SEO as part of an integrated plan, right? Meaning that like, what are we doing to, to on multiple fronts to put new patients in seats and also convince existing patients, right? You know, we, we, we talk about marketing and dentistry as if new patients are sort of the holy grail, but new patients are very expensive to get. And existing patients are much easier to quote unquote upsell our services to. And so, so you know, we, we think about growth as a zero-sum game from a new patient's perspective, and SEO is a sliver of what that entire equation is like. And I'll tell you right now, the data doesn't support SEO. So if you're paying for SEO, you want to think about why you're paying for it. You want to look at the actual conversions from the SEO right? Because it's not about how many visits you get. Everybody knows that. It's about conversions. And then, and then those conversions have to flip into the lifetime value of the patient. SEO is like a lease. If you lease a car forever, you're never going to stop paying for it ever, right? Because SEO companies are always going to come up with a reason. Hey, you know, this, your competitor just just beat you here. Well, well I want to be here. Well, okay, well, I can just take those dollars and put it into SEM, right? And I can always beat that competitor because I control it. I control the dollars. I also control the terms. With SEO, you don't have control of the terms as much as you think you do. So so it's, it's, it's very, very messy. And I do understand sort of the FOMO uh, uh, approach to this. But um, data says it's just not there. It's not there right now for dentists. So tell us more about the backside of what you just said, the SEM side and pain. 
Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, I mean, take, take a term like, like Invisalign, right? One, it's a known brand. Two, we know that if you look at Google Trends, for example, that people actually search for it. Okay. And, and if you're an Invisalign doctor or, or you know, clear an, a, a liner doctor, and there is a, I would hook onto that. And I would pay for that term because once I get that patient, I can I can work to keep them. So that's just one example. You know, dentist near me is another very powerful term, extraordinarily powerful. I mean, that's it's almost like all you need. And if you pay for that, you're go and 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 you and you pay for um you know that that first space. Great. Now I want to make something else clear. Paying for it isn't the solve. Remember, marketing is about placement, creative, and frequency. So if you pay for it and your creative sucks, you just, you suck. It sucked. You're just throwing money down the drain. So your creative can't suck. Here's the other thing where dentists absolutely fall on their face. They come to us all the time and we look at, we look at Google AdWords and SEM, and um, and and those uh, those aren't connected to very specific landing pages that are connected to the terms. Um, but what, what, whatever service in dentistry, well, why not personalize it with a landing page? By the way, which Google requires for the SEM and the ads to actually perform. It it, it really is staggering. Um, how many uh, practices come to us where that's not the case. And I can't imagine the uh, millions of dollars that are lost in dentistry. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, and everybody can search for this if you'd like. And it's in my book. So about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, the CMO of Uber came out. And right before he resigned, said, folks, I'm sorry, um, I, I just lost $150 million on Google Ads. <laughs> now, um, Uber is what? It's a digital company, right? How does Uber, who's a digital company, who's supposed to know this stuff, lose $150 million on digital advertising? So, the reason why I say that is because I, I I think you have to be very humble in this business. Like I am extremely humble to to because I want to act as a fiduciary for my clients. I want to make sure that their money, we know there's tremendous waste, and we know that 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 Google is is not honorable. It it just is not honorable in the way that it 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 um it distributes those ads, right? And we know that, and anybody that's worked with Google knows that Google's going to call you and say, you know, the reason why the ad isn't working is because you need to put more money to, to the game. <laughs> uh, and Always literally money. every single time. <clears throat> and we know that that's not true because it's about adjusting the terms and adjusting the landing pages and, and really trying to figure out like, like what Google is trying to do. And that takes time and that takes dedication. In, in, in our business, there's a lot of set it and forget it. And we just like, that's just not our, our gig. So what is a dental practice to do? I feel like, <laughs> all right, so you got to like pull back a little bit on your SEO. And obviously every practice is different in geography and all of those yeah. things. But would you share like your basic recipe for a secret sauce? Like, should we be, you know, say if should we be maybe using a percentage of what we bring in every month and do, and put that towards marketing and how do we best use those dollars that that's a great question pam um one uh, i i think to your point about geography location and time is absolutely well taken so you know um people in kansas city are going to uh think about this vastly different than in new york city or portland right um, so, so in terms of, in terms of budgeting for this, um, remember marketing, the function of marketing is to convince people 
to buy your products and ideas. That is the principal function of marketing. And so before we, uh, what we do is before we go to, to the tactic of bringing people in, we have to make an assessment of what's going on because your brand could be an issue. Your, your frequency could be an issue. Your creative could be an issue. So before you, you sort of make a decision about like where to invest and in what vehicle to invest and how to do that, we ask people to take a step back and, and literally like, you know, when, when dentists uh, first meet a new patient, what do they do? They, they sit down and they, 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 they look at what's going on. They come up with a treatment plan, right? Well, I, when, when we ask our, our clients to, to do that, meaning to do a discovery and really understand what's going on, they're, they're surprised. They're like, well, why would we do this? Because like, if you knew what you were doing, you would just come in and do it. And I would say, well, um, like, let's put it this way. American Express doesn't do this. Coca-Cola doesn't do this. Coca-Cola doesn't go out and say, hey, what do you know, you know, like, what, what do you know about selling sugar water and, you know, just come in and implement a program, right? It doesn't matter if it's WPP, Saatchi and Saatchi. They all come in and they say, all right, what problem are we trying to solve? So let's identify that first, Okay. So once, once you do that, then you can attack the issue because if it's a brand issue and a creative issue and you go out and spend money on, on buying ads, well, the stuff that's going to come back is going to be garbage. And then you're going to be frustrated, right? So all of this stuff has to align. Remember, branding and in and, and, and dental, this is the other thing that I don't understand, right? People like think about this, like, oh, you know, we need to come up with a branding program. Ladies and gentlemen, it took Coca-Cola 40 years to become a brand. It took 35 years for Starbucks to become a brand, right? I mean, if you just think about those things, it is not a branding issue. It's how you treat people. It's how you bring them in. And it's that relationship that you have when they get into the chair side that you have with them, but you can't do it by going out by 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 spraying and paying, uh, and and hoping to to bring these people in. You have got to develop a plan first and execute against that plan. Once you execute it against that plan, you collect data because stuff isn't going to work. Well, if 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 the folks on the other side are honorable, they're going to work with you to make it work and make those adjustments. Now you have baseline data. And you can execute against that. What do you have to say? Okay. this uh, Okay. So say if you do like a Facebook marketing program, which I know a lot of people who have, I've even thrown money towards this. And it's been for me personally, the biggest waste of money. And when you work with somebody who says, oh, I'll help you do that. You just keep giving them the same amount every month. They like take it and they act like you don't even need to be involved in any way. And then I'm told it's a marathon not a sprint. And so just keep throwing money at this. And eventually somebody's going to show up in your practice as a result of this stupid ad. So what do you have to say about that? Um, I'm in the New York Times telling Mark Zuckerberg to basically go f*** himself. Okay. L listen, um, here's the deal. Uh, it, it So we use a lot of data from from outside dental to to help to, to help sort of educate the community. Um, and I don't mean, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, but I am in the New York Times saying this is absolutely like ridiculous. What it, it, because it is, it does a disservice, not just the dentistry, but small businesses. And I'll tell you why. Um, the average engagement rate on not the ads, we'll get to the ads, but I want to right the average engagement rate for a an organic Facebook post. So like Pam, you know, you go on, you're like, oh, you know, um, Dr. Pam has an opening today and, you know, we're going to give 10% off of whatever, right? That's just organic. That's an organic post, right? You put your picture on it. You're like this, right? Or, you know, like your dental assistant or a picture of the, the sign and everybody's really, really happy, right? Why don't you guys give me a number? What is the average organic engagement rate with that post. You guys give me a number. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I have no concept. Just throw out like 
some kind of something. Throw it out. Oh my gosh. All right. So like number of people that engage that, with that a engage post? in that post. I would say so they make it look like it's probably in the ballpark of a thousand. Okay. So now give me the percentage of you know, however many people like give me a percentage of of people that are actually engaged in that post. Like from your from like your if, followers if you're on your Facebook page. How much? Did? Based on based on on my volume of followers, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh God, two percent. Point zero three. <clears throat> nice. Okay, so l let me explain what that means. Let's say you had a thousand relevant people on relevant, and we know how hard it is uh, to to get relevancy into the space. Um, it, it's certainly hard for us as a marketing company. Um, <clears throat> and I'm really terrible at math, but if we had a thousand people on your uh, Facebook page, uh, Dave, on your practice Facebook page. 0 0.03 is less than a half a person. Up to get that one in, huh? <laughs> How, what, what are we doing? So that's on the organic side. <clears throat> and, and, and mind you that Facebook purges 1 billion fake accounts a quarter, a quarter, which contribute to Anything that you do on the paid side, right? Because they have these bots, right? They, I mean, th th that's what it is. It's a self-perpetuating kind of thing. You pay them and then you're like, you look at the analytics, you're like, well, like, who are these people? Like, okay, I know I did the whole, like, you know, uh, I want it to be within five miles and I want it to be this and I want it to be that. But literally, like, who are these people? Like, wh why are people from Malaysia on here? You have no control over anything that you do on Facebook. Um, and, and I want you to think about this from a, a like just a psychological perspective. You're on Facebook because you want to see your friends and family and your in your network. I throw a, a dental ad in there. Oh, oh yeah, okay, great. Let me click. I mean, like seriously? Seriously? Now, I'm not saying that that um, that there has not been success found there, but I would say that just like with medicine, right, or anything, it needs to be replicable. And believe it or not, direct mail is actually more effective than Facebook. Direct mail. We have numbers, so... I, I apologize. I get very, very exercised about the whole Facebook thing because um, I, I, I just think that it's contributed, one, to a lot of confusion, two, um, to, uh, you know, dollars lost, as you mentioned, like, you know, you've tried it. Uh, and, and, and because we are psychologically connected to it, right? Like we, we are, they, they've created a great gig. It's tough to get off that crack, but it's, it really is crack. I like where we are. If what 65% is of what we see out there is fake and 0.03% is what we have control over. <clears throat> um, and I love that you went one at Zuckerberg. So how does a dentist defend against every Facebook group in dentistry that's taking a check from 10 different marketers that are selling them SEO that doesn't work, Facebook ads that doesn't work and stuff that doesn't work? Like, beyond the emotion, how do we arm them with more data that says, just stop the, the Facebook group that you're following is getting paid by these 10 people to say whatever the heck they want to say. It's not helping you. Right. I, I, I think it's a mindset. And, and, you know, what, what, when I speak, I actually like people ask me that. And, and I really think it's a mindset of, because it's not just dentistry, right? Like, I mean, we see it in healthcare. We have, we, you know, we work with banks, we work with government services, but people want easy and people want data, right? People want like, oh, it's, it, this is easy and people want data, but it's vanity data, right? Like, you know, the number of likes, I mean, and, and I think, I think we've gotten beyond that. I think people are recognizing that after 16 years of Facebook or, or since 2006, people are now like, oh, wait a minute. Like, what does it mean that we have likes? Like, it doesn't matter. Okay. 
So we have to go back to basics and say marketing is a business problem. And also there is a sense of entitlement when I talk to um, when I talk to certain dentists, like I get 30 new patients a month. Now, it's funny because that 30 new patients a month number is uh, is sort of like universal. I don't know like where people get 30 patients a month, <laughs> but that number is like the Everybody's number. Getting. Right. And I'm like, OK, great. <laughs> Um, can you show me, can you show me your, uh, your, well, no, I can't show you. Well, you know, or, or, or it's a DSO. And I'm like, well, you know, does this practice, like, does this practice truly, I mean, this is a role of practice. You think that this practice where the town only has like, you know, 4,000 people, they're getting 30 patients a month. We have to get real about our expectations from marketing because marketing solves a business problem. The, the other thing that I see, Dave, and, and it's just, um, it just occurred, and it may not be directly addressing your question, is that once you gain scale as, um, you know, and have multiple practices, and I don't care if you call it a DSO or whatever, you need marketing infrastructure, right? And um, sometimes dentists will look at their marketing as if they're trading stocks, like I put in this and I should get this. And again, I go back to, you know, our work in financial services. That's just not the way people look at it. There are certain things that you have to do for your brand, certain things that you have to do for, you know, where there's a real call to action. But if your brand is crap, your call to action is going to be a waste of time. So again, I want to go back to basics with everybody and then sort of build that baseline and then launch from that baseline. And and by the way, the, your website is like a telephone. Your you know your 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 Facebook channel, it's a channel. And so you want to think about it as how do I get relevant people into that channel? But it is very very hard to do. Do you want to be a media company or do you want to be a dentist? Yeah. That's a great point. So it sounds to me that like most things, and I mean, I always liken everything back to dentistry. I feel like it's the only real language I speak. And it's, you really need a plan and you need an individualized plan for your practice, your location, your goals, and, you know, kind of what you're working with too. I think a lot of us want something, which I mean, trust me, I would too, something that's sort of turnkey that I could kind of fling a few dollars at per month and like not even think about it. And all of a sudden, poof, all of this you know, success comes from it. So how does that work? So, I mean, people, you have a book coming out, so I feel like you could, can you share with us about your book, but also does that give us a license to do DIY marketing? Like, like what, what do we do? Well, I, you know, I, I think the digital stuff uh, has helped, by the way, it's, it's helped. Uh, it, it, it's net net. I think it, it's done some good, but a lot of bad. Right. And we don't like to admit the bad. Um, my, my book is called Irresponsibly Digital. It's coming out in May. And it actually delves into a lot of the issues that we just discussed. Um, uh, but go, answering your question about what we do, what, what you do is you right now, the best thing to do is assess where you are and assess where you want to go. So but we can't really control outside of 24 months. So what we do is we develop a 12-month a integrated marketing plan. Because, by the way, you don't own anything on Facebook. Nothing. When Facebook goes down, what do you do? Um, we put a lot of stock in email because email is six times more effective. Six times more effective than social media. Okay. Uh, so that goes into the hopper. The branding stuff goes into the hopper. And then what happens is you come out with this sort of like um, very specific, this is what we're going to do to address this problem. So if we've identified the issue is language, it's a brand, your videos are terrible. We fix those before we spend money to go out. Um, we do have to take a presence on social. I spend a lot of times beating up social because I need to kind of make it a point uh, to, to counter to, to counter the position that it's the end all and be all, right? However, it's still a very important part of the presentation of your practice. 
of, of the distribution of the message of your practice, but it is not here. It is here. I don't know if you can see that. No, I, <laughs> it's not here. It's here. I think uh, it was appropriately placed. Yeah. Uh, and then anything in between here is, it, it could be email and email takes a lot of work because it's database marketing. People don't like to do that. People want easy. Well, again, six times more, six times more efficacy from email than social. So you, but I would encourage to develop that email list. And yes, the reviews are part of that ecosystem. The, um, uh, the, uh, you know, the speaking engagements, if you're a doctor, you're, you're out there speaking, and then that goes back into your LinkedIn account, absolutely part of that ecosystem. But that is not divorced from what you say about yourself and how you say it, right? Because that's your brand. So if your brand isn't developed and it isn't working in concert through every single channel, then what you're doing is you're dropping marketing bombs. Oh, I did this, it worked. I did it next week, it didn't work. Well, there's going to be a bunch of things that don't work because you're dealing with a behavioral, like it, marketing is a behavioral science, right? I'm trying to convince you to buy, to come in and 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 let me be your dentist or, you know, let me um, care for you. So, so what, why should I do that? Well, you have to answer that. And you have to answer it in a way that speaks to your audience. And what we tend to do on the creative side is uh, because we, we we do a lot of work in healthcare, um, and we've done a lot of research in healthcare. And the way that people choose dentists is is actually the same, if not if not unlike, um, not unlike the way that they choose a PCP, the same exact way. And do you know? Who makes that decision? The, 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 the chief mom officer, the, the CMO, right? So our language for our clients tend to skew female. It's It tends to be a little softer, it, it, right? And it's not like we're not speaking to males, but that's part of the brand. And it's part of the thinking that goes into brand and language development. Again, it works hand in hand with everything else. I like it. So brand, we got placement, creative, consistency. Pam, I feel like I have more work to do. <laughs> I definitely have more work to do. Yeah, no, I'm missing the boat on several things. So Abe, thank you so much for joining us. We're almost out of time. So I'm going to ask you a question that I'm going to ask you to answer like super, super fast. And then if you're going to leave us hanging and wanting more, maybe you can tell us how to follow you. So first question, with a proper plan in place, when did dentists see an ROI on their marketing efforts? Outside of nine months, 100%. Okay. I, for, let me back up, let me back up, 85% of the time. All right, I Fair. like it. And where can we learn more and how do we follow you? And where do we find the book? Well, the, the, the book's gonna be at irresponsiblydigital.com and the website's going up in a couple of weeks. So maybe by the time that this thing gets on, it'll be on. You, you could find me on LinkedIn, just search for my name and at verisoni.com. Amazing. Excellent. Well, Abe, it's always great to chat with you. I always learn something and I always have such a great time every time I'm with you. So congratulations on your book. Thank you so much for joining us. And David, you want to take it home? Yeah, Abe, thanks for the data. I think that data helps drive our very best decision. It's help, it helps us as dentists, I think, unplug that emotion. So thanks for being here, friends. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Until uh, next week, right? We're going to say next sayonara week. for Dentistry Unmasked today. Cheers, well, it's guys. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. I had a lot of fun. Thank you, everyone, for watching or listening to the show this week. And thanks to our guests and sponsors on this episode. Please check out our social media at Dr. Pamela underscore Maragliano and at Dental Economics Official. Or you can check me out at Ignite DDS or at Dr. David Rice. And go to dentaleconomics.com to receive dental economics. You can choose to receive DE in print or digitally, and you can also get the details of our Principles of Practice Management Conference on our website. If you have topics or guests or anything you'd like to talk about on the show, send us an email to dentistryunmaskedpodcast 
podcast at gmail.com and we will do our very best to make it happen. Thanks again. And we'll see you next week.